My name is Jonathan Cohen. I'm a partner at Next Law Professional Corporation. I'm here with criminal lawyer Dan Joffe, who is a senior lawyer here at Next Law. One of the most common questions we get at our law firm is whether it's possible to get a criminal charge withdrawn, even when it appears that the client is guilty. Dan? Well, the good news is the answer is yes. In some cases, it is possible that a skilled lawyer can get your charges withdrawn, even when you appear to be guilty. Okay, so if you're able to get the charges withdrawn, is there any uh, residual legal impact on your client? The good news is no. Once a charge is withdrawn or charges are withdrawn, then you actually walk away from the case as if nothing ever happened. Okay, so can you explain how a uh, lawyer can get charges withdrawn even when someone appears to be guilty? The answer lies, John, in something called the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, otherwise known as the Charter. Now, the Charter is an incredibly powerful document because it guarantees certain rights to everyone, to everyone in Canada from the actions of the government, which include the police and the court system. For someone that faces a criminal charge, the Charter is a big deal. I think it would be helpful if you could just dive a little deeper into the Charter and why it matters to someone that has been criminally charged by the police. Yeah, the, the charter matters, John, because it's designed to protect you from the actions of the police as they try to convict you on the charges that they laid against you. So for the past 40 years, there have been thousands and thousands of court cases that have interpreted the details of the charter. These cases actually define how the police can and must investigate the charges against you. And critically, how the police must conduct themselves in every single interaction with you. And that conduct is not optional. The police have to do their job the right way. And there is a right way and a wrong way as they deal with your charges. So is it fair to say that the charter is like um, a roadmap that the police have to follow? Yeah, that, that's a good characterization. The charter is like a roadmap and the police and the courts have to follow that roadmap. And using that roadmap analogy, you can view the thousands of court cases that the charter has, has been litigated on, like having a zoom lens on that roadmap where very specific details of how the police and the courts must conduct themselves as they prosecute the charges against you. Okay, that makes sense. So, so what impact does the charter and those thousands of court cases have on someone's case as it uh, relates to getting their charges withdrawn? You know, what it means is that the rules that the police and the courts must follow are very specific. And we're all human. I mean, we all make mistakes, and so do police officers, and especially those police officers who are not experienced. They make even more mistakes than usual. And when a police officer makes a mistake, that mistake can be fatal to the charges against you. And if a fatal mistake is made, the charges can get withdrawn even when you appear to be guilty. Okay, so now give um, an example, a specific example, where someone with no legal training would think the police were just doing their job, but in fact, they were making these mistakes. Yeah, that's a, it's a good question. We get it all the time. Let, let me take you through an example where it may appear to the untrained eye that the police were doing their job, but in fact, the police were making a mistake. And not just any mistake, but a mistake that's so big in the court's eyes that the charges were with, withdrawn, even though the suspects appear to be guilty. So let me give you a real example. We're going to hide the client's name, but we're going to call him Stephen. Section 8 of the Charter protects you against any unreasonable search and seizure. So Stephen's in a park, and a police officer thinks he saw Stephen do something suspicious. He thinks he saw Stephen complete a drug transaction, and he thinks he saw Stephen put the drugs in his backpack. The officer can't simply come up to Stephen and demand to see what's in his backpack. The officer would need to have what's called a reasonable and probable ground to believe that Stephen either committed a crime or was in the process of doing so. You know, a suspicion or a hunch you know, that we all have as individuals is not good enough in the context of law enforcement. And if Stephen is not under arrest, the police officer cannot search Stephen. So let's say the officer does search Steve and he opens Steve's backpack and he finds drugs. In this case, the police officer made a big mistake. That mistake is that Stephen was not under arrest. So the drugs, even though are illegal on the face of it, but the drugs that the police found, which is key evidence, is not 
admissible because it violated Stephen's charter right against unreasonable search or seizure. So in this case, even though the police found drugs that are, are illegal in Stephen's backpacks, the charges against Stephen would get and were withdrawn. Yeah, that's great. So uh, let's continue on that. Give another example. Let's do another example where uh, the police make a mistake in the context of unreasonable search and seizure. Again, let's use the name Stephen in another real example where we've hidden the name of the client. But Stephen was a passenger in a car and there's a big snowstorm. Car slid off the road into a ditch and a passerby saw this, called the police. The police arrived and the police asked Stephen for his ID, which Stephen agreed to give. But here's what happened next. The officer checks Stephen's ID and sees that Stephen was in breach of a bail condition. He put Stephen under arrest for breach of that bail condition. And the, as, and the police took him to the police station where they search him and they find cocaine hidden in his, clo in his clothing. And again, multiple charges are laid, including breach of bail and possession of drugs. However, in this case, the officer made a big mistake. The officer did not tell Stephen why he wanted his ID. So in this case, the officer had really no valid reason to ask for Stephen's ID. And taking Stephen's ID was an illegal search and seizure according to the charter. Charter. So, so why would asking for uh, Stephen's ID be an illegal uh, seizure according specifically to the charter? Because Stephen wasn't the driver of the car. So there were no for example, Highway Traffic Act issues. And, and Stephen was not under arrest at the time the officer asked for his ID. The officer said he asked Stephen for his ID because he was concerned about his safety. But that reason is not good enough under the lens of the charter. The court agreed with us that taking the ID was an illegal seizure of property, that property being Stephen's ID. And because of that ruling, all the evidence that came after wrongfully taken Stephen's ID, including the, the breach of the bail and the uh, including the possession of the drugs, that was all not valid and all charges were withdrawn. Okay, so those are great examples. Um, is there anything uh, more that you can leave uh, the viewers of this video with? You know, as I said before, the, you know, these examples are real, uh, real clients and real scenarios. We just changed the names, but most people who face criminal charges don't even know that the police were not following the rules. Uh, and the reason why is that these rules and, and the interpretation of these rules are incredibly complex and every fact situation is different and should really be closely reviewed to see if possibly um, there's been a mistake and a big mistake and, and the possibility of having your charges withdrawn. Okay, great. So listen, if you like this video, if this video is helpful in any way, uh, just look down to the bottom right of this video. You can subscribe to the Next Law video channel. We're always coming up with these types of uh, videos on a regular basis. And, um, and that's it. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, John.